economic performance of Brunei. So first of all, Brunei is a small country that is located between Sabah and Sarawak frontier. The area of the Brunei is 5,765 km square, which is not more than 1% of Borneo, but that's almost two times bigger than the country Luxembourg. Brunei is just a mini Borneo by its geographical lobe, as it is constituted with rainforest, peat swamp, and also vast coastal mangrove plains. The season of Brunei is known as Bruneian, which is also known as Malay, and the second largest group is Chinese. Brunei finally got their independence in 1984 after they became one of the protectorate country of British in 1888. Brunei is also one of the Commonwealth and also Asian members. Brunei economy consists of a mixture of domestic and foreign entrepreneurship. Brunei's economy started to be in a moderate growth situation in the middle of 2000. However, recently the economy has fallen sharply. The role of the government in conducting the monetary policy is very limited. The Brunei Currency Board, which is also known as BCB, is the monetary authorities. It always acts as the Ministry of Finance, the Central Bank, Department of Economic, Planning and Development, and also Economic Development Board. So the graph is indicate the economic performance in Brunei over the 14 years, which is from 2004 until 2017. So the first graph is graph of um, employment rate in Brunei over the 14 years. From 2004 until 2006, the unemployment rate in Brunei gradually rose so that the unemployment rate started to fall for 3 years continuously. There was a sharply increase in the unemployment rate in year 2014. And the unemployment rate in Brunei has experienced a small change from year 2014 to year 2017. The peak of the unemployment rate is in Brunei over the 14 years is 7.081% in year 2017. In conclusion, the graph shows the unemployment rate from the 2004 to 2017 is quite stable. However, the graph indicates the inflation rate in the Brunei from 2004 to 2017. The inflation rate in Brunei was increasing. There was a dramatically fall from year 2005 and year 2006, then falling again in year 2007. It rose to 12.693% in year 2008 and fall sharply in year 2009. The inflation rate of in blue 9 showed an upward trend from year 2009 to year 2011. It is the peak for the inflation rate in Brunei over 14 years in the year 2011. And after that, the inflation rate picked up in year 2016. This shows that the inflation rate of Brunei fluctuated over the 14 years. Besides, the, uh, this another graph illustrates the real interest rate in Brunei from year 2004 to year 2017. The percentage of real interest rate for it then increased year by year from 2005 to 2007. There was a peak in real interest rate in year 2009, then it started to fall dramatically in, in the next year. However, in year 2012, the percentage was, was going up until the following year, then it slightly dropped in year 2014. It noted that the real interest rate had declined in year 2016. It indicated that the interest rate in Brunei was fluctuating over the 40 years and having the most unstable time in 2008 and 2010. Last but not least, the graph shows the economic growth rate in Brunei from year 2004 to year 2017. From year 2004 until year 2006, the percentage of economic growth was flat after that, the growth rate rose rapidly in 2010 and 2011. Next, the following economic growth rate has dropped sharply until year 2015. It then increased gradually in year 2016 and year 2017. The graph shows the economic growth rate 
fluctuated over the years and have the most unstable time between 2008 and 2012. Presenting the factors affecting the trends of the four variables, which is first unemployment rate, inflation rate, interest rate, and economic growth. Okay, so Brunei is a resource dependent country and is considered to be the fourth largest oil producer in Southeast Asia. Brunei's oil and gas sector contribute more than half of the country's gross domestic product GDP and 90% of its exports. Brunei hydrocarbon reserves are declining since the last several decades and its oil reserves are declining. Brunei's over-reliance of oil and gas could be a major problem and be more of a cost than a blessing in disguise. Based on the graph, it is shown that the changes of unemployment rates from 2004 to 2013 are slight but from the year 2013 to 2014, the changes were suddenly huge. This is due to the happening of an oil crisis during 2014, which involves the dramatic drop of oil prices. As the economy of Brunei is badly affected, many sectors will want to cut down the number of workers to ensure lesser loss. This is a type of cyclical unemployment which is when workers lose their jobs because of downturns in the business cycle. It is noticeable from the graph that the rate of unemployment could not be as low as how it was before 2014 and this is actually because of the prices of oil remains low as the year goes by. Another reason that contributes to Brunei's higher unemployment rate is the over-generous public employment. Since its dependency in 1984, has raised the standard of living by providing free health and education, high salaries for government employees, low domestic prices of oil, gas and local landline costs, housing grants, interest-free housing loan and old pensions. So, uh, the next one is inflation rate. The graph indicates a stable change of inflation rate except for certain years which show sudden deflation. 2009 and 2015 are the years that went through deflation and had their inflation rates drop to negative values. Deflation happens when prices fall because the supply of goods is higher than the demand for those goods. This is usually because of a reduction in money, credit or consumer spending. Based on our findings, we can conclude that the price of oil during 2009 and 2015 has fallen a lot compared to other years. A lower price of oil in terms of other goods and services means a higher price of other goods and services in terms of oil. A lower price of oil means that for a barrel of oil, you can get more of other goods and services. When demand is too high, prices will rise and so to avoid having a decreased value of dollar over time, tight monetary policy will be applied which leads to higher interest rates. Money supply will fall too and consumers will not be able to spend so much anymore. Food items, in turn, have the highest rate in the country's CPI basket of goods and services. The 2014 deflation part can be linked to unemployment too as deflation can lead to unemployment because when companies make less money, they react by cutting costs in order to survive. These workers then have to decrease their own spending, which leads to even less demand and more deflation and causes a deflationary spiral that is hard to break. So the graph stated that the interest rate of Brunei is relatively stable from 2004 to 2007. However, the interest rate rises in 2008 and 2009 due to the inflation in the economy. As mentioned previously, the years that have exceptional changes out of all are 2009 and 2015, where both hit the peak and classify as deflation. In general, as interest rates are increased, more people are not able to borrow more money. The result is that customers don't have more money to spend, causing the economy to not grow and inflation to decrease. As interest rates increase, consumers lend to save as return from savings are higher. In other words, when deflation is occurring, customers often slow down their spending, thinking prices will fall further. Deflation lightens the money supply because there are increased real interest rate causing customers to save money. It hinders the revenue growth from firms, causing workers to get paid lower wages or potentially lead off. This leads to higher unemployment rates and lower growth rates. Economic diversification and reliance on oil production have always been a problem since Brunei first 
National Development Plan. Blokovic stated that development economists found out that there is a negative relation between resources abundance and economic growth, and a positive relation between a resources abundance and internal conflicts. All these problems lead to phenomenon of rentarism and Dutch disease. Dutch disease refers to the problems associated with a rapid increase in the production of raw materials, causing a decline in other sectors of the economy. When the raw material runs out, the economy can be in a worse position from that before. Judging from the oil price fall that happened during 2009 and 2015, it is no surprise that the economic growth of the country will fall during those times. When oil price fall, oil sectors will get the least benefit. So now, I'm going to talk about the impacts of fiscal policy on the economy and business of Brunei. First of all, fiscal policy affects aggregate demand through the changes in government spending and taxation. Therefore, the government of Brunei has kept tightened its fiscal outlay by following the plunge in revenue from hydrocarbon exports and also to slow down the performance in the non-oil private sector since 2007. The government expenditures had increased in 2009 and 2010, and this led to the revenue from hydrocarbon exports and reasonable public of BND 953 million in year 2000. Due to this reason, the government will continue to be fiscally prudent to reach a balanced budget to enhance its fiscal position. Because of heavily dependent on gas and oil reserves, Brunei's economy had hit by the world oil prices, which are set out in 20 years. In fact, the oil and gas sector had declined by 2.4% due to 7.4% drop in gas and methanol production and 0.7% drop in oil and gas mining, according to statistics in 2008. The thing is, oil and gas represents 90% of government revenue. Besides, the Department of Economic Planning and Development DEPD, claims that the capital expenditure in the private sector will continue to rise. Based on the international monetary found from IMF 20 and 15, Brunei was ranked in the fourth place in the global ranking of gross domestic product GDP per capita, which measured in purchasing power parity current international dollars. This shows that Brunei has such heavy reliance on hydrocarbon proceeds and this led to Brunei's economic growth is highly vulnerable to domestic and international force such as the Asian Financial Crisis AFC and the Global Financial Crisis GFC which can affect the oil and gas markets as shown in the figure. Based on the figure, it shows that the oil price per barrel is closely linked to the fiscal position. This means that the impact of weakened government fiscal position significantly had been caused by the collapse of oil prices in the late 1990s. In a nutshell, Brunei is highly dependent on its oil and gas which can provide extensive subsidies to people. This is why there is a fluctuated line graph occurs in the economic growth of Brunei. As shown in the graph, the economic growth of the country was seriously affected by the government expenditure. When the government expenditure increased from 2015 to 2017, the economic growth also raised from negative 24.38% until 6.38%. That's all from me. So now, I will be talking about the impacts of monetary policy on the economy and our businesses of the country that we study, that's Brunei. Monetary policy impacts the money supply in an economy and it influences the interest rate and inflation rate of the country. It includes all the direct and indirect impacts that affect AD, that is aggregate demand. Monetary policy is controlled by the central bank of a country. The central bank of Brunei Darussalam called Authority Monetary Brunei Darussalam, also known as AMBD, is responsible to the implementation of monetary policy, the regulation of financial institutions as well as currency management. It also monitors and collects information relating to relevant aspects of Brunei Darussalam's economy and global de development. 
So based on the country, the real interest rate of Brunei has risen to the peak in 2009. This shows that Authority Monetary Brunei Darussalam AMBD works on contractionary monetary policy in order to decrease the AD and real GDP in Brunei. When the real interest rate of Brunei rises to the peak, it means the economic growth of Brunei has come to the truth. In the opposite, when the real interest rate of Brunei falls to the truth during 2011, the economic growth rate of Brunei has rise to the peak. In general, the real interest rate and the economic growth rate is a negative relationship. The AD of a country can be influenced by many factors such as consumer spending on goods and services, government spending, investment, and also in exports and imports. In conclusion, individuals and firms are actively consuming more goods and services during the low interest rate period such as year 2011 based on our findings as it helps to increase the economic growth of a country. Thank you.